Second John, verse 9. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come on if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Okay, we talked about doctrine. We're on the fiftieth lesson. The doctrine is what Christ taught. <coughs> what, what God has taught. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, how to be saved. You got to know the difference in the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Christ, and the doctrine of the world, and the doctrine of Satan. Because now it says, if somebody comes to you and brings not this doctrine of Christ, you're not to receive them in your home. Now there are people who come up to you that will knock on your door. And they'll bring the gospel to Lord Jesus Christ by the King James Bible. And there will be people who will come to your door, will knock on your door, ring your doorbell, and they'll bring anything other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. They'll bring a magazine, they'll bring a video, they'll bring something other than Christ. Now the key word is Him. Bid Him, neither bid Him God speed. Him is the deceiver, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh. Somebody comes to your door and doesn't confess Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Jehovah Witnesses do not profess Jesus Christ is God. He's a great teacher. He's a prophet. But he's not God. They are deceivers. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we had wrought, but that we receive a full reward. We can lose rewards by deceivers coming to our door, bringing something that's not Bible, bringing anti-Bible, anti-God, anti-Christ material. Whosoever transgresses and bideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. If those people come to your door and do not have the doctrine, the teaching of Jesus Christ, they're not of God. That's the Bible just said. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. When they come knocking on your door, and they're going to bring you the gospel of how to be saved by the Calvary, by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is God and that is the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, Christ, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God. Don't allow him in your house. When the Jehovah Witnesses come to my door and knock it, I won't I stay outside. The Bible says don't let him in your house. I take that verse very literal. At this time, we move from the person of the deceiver to the doctrine of the deceiver. We already have seen what the doctrine of Christ is and seen what their doctrine is. It's against God. It's antichrist. There is one that is according to the scriptures, doctrine, and one that is not, doctrine. One says Jesus is God, and the other, Jesus is not God. They're going to profess one or two things. Jesus is God or Jesus is not God. They're going to profess one thing. Either the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin or something else. They're either going to bring to you that I can know that I'm saved. I can know where I'm going to go when I die or leave doubt. They're going to bring the finished work of Jesus Christ or they'll bring merits and works. If there come any unto you. They will knock on your door just like born-again, Bible-believing Christians knock on doors. It makes me annoyed. I have been in many current addresses for over a year. And I have had Jehovah Witnesses at my door dozens of times and not one Baptist church. 
I had other day when I wrote this, two Mormon ladies at the door. No Baptists. Here's a Baptist eye vision for 2020 in the book Acts 2020. How and how yeah, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but that that let me try this again. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house. Paul went to house to house. The disciples went house to house. The apostles went house to house. Jesus went to village to village, house to house. Any. We read in the verse. If there come any, this is the deceivers. It's not dressed to brethren. I'm looking. I thought somewhere he used the word brethren. I could be wrong. Well, these, any, are not brethren. They're not, well, they may be saved and lost and involved in a cult. But any here are the deceivers that have anything but the truth. You are a born again Bible believing Christians, and in the epistles, the elect lady. He's writing to Christians. And he's not talking about. Christians. He's talking about deceivers. We are in a day and age Christians are told to get along with everyone and everyone's religion. Unity. Togetherness. Don't preach contrary to one religion. That's what they're telling you. But God has a serious warning. He's saying about these deceivers. He says... Receive them not into your house, one, and neither bid them Godspeed. Don't say, have a good day. We'll pray for you. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's a good speed. God's telling you don't have anything to do with these, and this is contrary to the world belief. Let's get everybody together. We're not all together. You've got the doctrine of Christ, or you've got the doctrine of Satan, which is also the doctrine of the world. And bring not this doctrine. We talked about it in verse 9. And verse 49. I mean, not verse 4. Lesson 49, 48, 47, 46 to 49. It looks like we talked about the doctrine issue. Those verses. And the warning is that, verse 8, you can lose a reward. Not inviting them in your house, not wishing them Godspeed. I don't think that's the... The fear is, a Paul, or John, I want to say Paul. The fear is, don't allow them in your house because they may convince you. Especially if you're a newborn babe or growing in the word. If you haven't studied the scriptures, if you haven't studied the religions, don't bring them in. Keep them out. Especially if you're young. The doctrine of Christ, if what they say is not according to the scriptures, so you're going to deal with them. Deal with them outside. Have your Bible. Open your Bible. Know where it is in your Bible when you deal with it. Another thing is, when you open your Bible, they may have a world Bible. When you open your Bible, you have them read what the King James Bible says. Make them read it. If it's not according to the scriptures, it is not this doctrine. And you can deal with anybody that comes to your door outside of Bible-believing Christians. You can deal with these people and talk for hours and never have a Bible open. Is there something wrong with that? We watched a video the other day, a guy dealing with, with a religion. 
They're trying to promote their book. And the guy says, well, hey, I got a Bible. Let's open up the Bible. And they turn around and say, well, this book is more authority than the Bible. Well, friend, the Bible says you are deceivers. And they'll come not only to your door, they'll come on bikes. It rests upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's it. It's no other man. It's no works. It's no merits. No church. No seeing weird things. No finding weird people. No angels. Jesus Christ. Do you know if you were to if you were to pray a prayer in front of a Jehovah Witness in the name of Jesus Christ, they're gonna be they're gonna be absent. They won't get out of the conversation. Why is that? If they're not even comfortable talking about Jesus Christ. Never mind mentioning scriptures that mention that he is God. That's a conclusion of fact is they're not right. The Jesus was virgin born. A woman that had no sexual encounter with any man ever. She's not just a maid. See, I said that because there are doctrines out there that proclaim that Mary was not the virgin. Other things. She was a virgin until after she gave birth to Jesus. Then her and Joseph came together and had children. The Bible, Jesus, that you must believe in salvation, is a Jesus that had brothers and sisters. If your Jesus has no brothers and sisters, you do not have the Bible, Jesus. How's that one in your face? Because there are people out there who say Mary was a perpetual virgin. Then she sinned against her husband Joseph. That God is Jesus. And Jesus is God. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If they say anything else, it's not this doctrine. So you got to nail them down. How are you doing? Well, where you come from? Blah, 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 blah. What do you have to say about Jesus Christ? Blah, 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 blah. What about the blood of Jesus? Well, what about he's virgin? Well, what about being God? But... So you got to watch out for those little words that you can't answer the question right off. You were asking me, say, what do you think about Jesus Christ? Man, he's my Savior. What else about Jesus? Man, he died the cross and, sit and saved my soul by being God and shedding God's blood, Acts 20, 28. I'm going to give you scripture. I'm going to lay out what the Bible says. I may not be able to quote the chapter and the verse, but I'm going to say, listen, and you're going to be able to check it out and say it with a concordance and say, yeah, that was in the Bible. You're not going to bring me, I'm not going to bring you, as not to be brought to you what a man said. Well, the Bible's written by a man. See, you're foolish. The Bible already told you, yeah, it was written by a man, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Well, ours spoke by an angel. And Paul said, if any other angel bring not this doctrine, let them be accursed. Uh, did you read that one? So if an angel wants you to look at your toast and worship Jesus, that's not in the Bible. What is the doctrine of truth again? For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. Let's stop right there for a minute. 
If Jesus professed by Paul writing that he arose from the grave, he's no mere man. How many bodies by their own are missing in the graveyards of the world today? I mean, on their own power. And yet, if you were to go to the tomb of Jesus, wherever it is, it was Joseph of Aramea's tomb. That I know. If you were to go to that tomb today, there is no body. It was no body snatching. No one stole the body. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. If it's anything else, it's a man. They will die. Wages of sin is death. They will be buried. And they're not coming out of that grave to God calls them out. And that he was seen of Cephas and of the twelve. After that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once. How many people saw the golden plates? How many people have seen these Hebrew Native Americans? How many people are the 150, 100, yeah, 155,000 of Jehovah's Witnesses? Huh? 144,000 of Jehovah's Witnesses. Have you counted the number of the Jehovah's Witness assembly worldwide? Doesn't that tell you something? The Bible says in Revelation, concordance, I don't have time. It says 144,000, and that is what their, their leader said they were. They were the 144,000. Problem. At some point in history, 144,000, one. 144,000, two. 145,000, three and four, husband and wife got into their doctrine. Jesus Christ was going to come back 1914. Jesus Christ is going to come back 1970. Jesus Christ is going to come in 88. Jesus Christ is going to come in... Don't you have a problem? What's the old saying? Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice, and I'm an ass. There's no fooling twice. So these deceivers are wrong. So enough that in 13 verses of this one little tiny epistle that is packed full of meat, it has breast milk in it for the for the growing Christian. It has meat in here. It has the little baby food in here that he gives out a warning that these people can take your crowns. And you want to know something? Some of you Baptists are going to fall on the ground and going to call nine one one right now and have you resuscitated. There are saved people in the Jehovah Witnesses today. Get the paddles. <laughs> Hello, you still out there? There are saved Mormons. There are saved Roman Catholics. Oh, now they're really on the floor. Why? Number one, they didn't read the Bible. Number two, they didn't study the Bible. Number three, they didn't pray to God. Number four, they didn't adhere to what John said. They listened to them. Listen, the Bible proclaims they're wolves in sheep's clothing. Somehow, probably Satan, but I, I can't say that. I'm not going to place no blame on Satan. Somehow, these cults get a hold of newborn Christians, freshly saved, right out of the womb, newborn. And they go after them. And unlike a hospital, if you were to take a baby, all the alarms will go off. And that happened to me accidentally when I was in the hospital with my son. I accidentally moved him to a place where I wasn't supposed to. I mean, the whole floor, with sirens, lights, doors locked. Pastor, brethren, what do you do with these young Christians that are out there and then get acceptable to these deceivers? Well, I guess they're just going. You're getting back. They came to me. They do not have the doctrine of Christ. What do I do? Say, Brother Sally, I'm a new Christian. What do I do? Don't even knock on the door. 
I mean, no, no, they're not going to. Don't even open the door. You're not ready yet. Well, how do I know that? If, if, just pretend they're not for your best interest. If it's somebody you haven't invited, if it's not the postman, the UPS guy, or a police officer, or whoever like that, don't answer the door. And as you grow in, in Christ, as you grow in the scripture, realize, say, hey, you know, who are the people in my neighborhood? Here's Jehovah Witnesses. Back where I grew up was the Mormons. You may have no one come to your doors, including Baptists. Then you don't need to worry. But find out who the people are. Slowly get into, now listen. I'm going to get this one doctor straight from this Jehovah Witness. Yeah, and five years later, they're going to change that doctor. At one time, these false religions, I'm not going to name their name, but you know colored people were Satan or of Satan? Colored people would never be saved. They were outcast, and today they're in assembly. I'll tell you right now, we see a group of colored people coming out of one place. You ask my wife and my daughter, and I will search the scriptures, I will search the Bible, and I will show you find the evidence that they were forbidden way back when. And they come out by the droves out the entrance of their church, or whatever they want to call it. I don't know. Just being calm, being cool. Find out what they believe, and find out what the counter attacking about. I'll tell you what I do when it comes to Jehovah Witnesses. John 10.30. I and the Father are one. How more can you get than that? And that gets them angry. Number two, if they haven't kicked you to the ground and left yet, number two, you really want to get a Jehovah Witness angry? I got a husband and wife angry one day in, in Norwich. I got them flew me. I said, so tell me. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Blah, 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 that's your point of view. Blah, 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 that's your interpretation all that. I can tell you what they're going to say. Number two, I've mentioned this before. Of the 144,000, which two are you? And that Bible I had, which I lost, or I gave it away, probably something. I had in the cover of that Bible, I looked up the the population or the growth rate of Jehovah Witnesses. I had in my Bible approximately when that 144,000 were in that year. And let me tell you. Those two, when they entered that organization, was way, way after that day. They got fuming. People hate the truth. Know your Bible. Titus 2.13. Tells you that God is Jesus. And they'll give you that, you know, that John Hopkins something commissary. Why do they got to come up with big names to go for their lives? Then, okay, they don't go for Titus 2.13. Go home. Study the syntax. Uh, do I have time? Do I have this Bible? Syntax. See, they got to have big words. Big words fool people. Titus. I'm trying to get in You know, there's words I know right now that you don't know. I could pass on you that I know something. Uh, syntax. I have it spelled S-Y-N-T-A-X. And it's talking about the comma. How some commas do this and some comments. It, you just mess with the English language. Throw it in the garbage. Press one. I press one, I still don't understand. Know who you're dealing with before you deal with them. Okay? If you don't know how a steak should be cooked, don't bring that piece of meat to the chef and say, this ain't rare like I asked for. If you don't know what it is, rare is. Would you go up to your auto mechanic and say, well, you know, I think the flowers of this car is wrong. Excuse me while he goes off in another room and laughs at his other, with his other mechanics and how stupid you are. Know them, know who they are after you, you've got what the Bible says. And pretty much, you know what, don't even waste your time. Give them the gospel and let them go. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Don't fight with religions. I, I will stand the ground. And I'm going, this is a rabbit trail. I'm sorry. I will stand the ground if I realize or if I think that one of the Jehovah Witnesses is a newly convert or very young. Then I will be the wolf. 
and try to snag them. But if I'm dealing with two professionals, John 10.30, Titus 2.13, Acts 20.28. 20, now let, let's go to this one. This one will do. If this one doesn't throw a monkey wrench into their monkey, they're monkeying around. Watch what Acts 20.28 20, says. This is not in the notes. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, Christian. Paul, Paul said, "Hey, watch yourselves." And to the flock over the whole, over the which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer. You better watch that flock; they don't fall into these wolves, Pastor, Reverend, Pastorette. That would get smart. Which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer. To feed the, I'm not supposed to point, but to feed the church of God. That's us, right? We're not the assembly of God. We're the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Jesus upon Calvary. Now, that's not Jesus God and God Jesus. Jehovah Witness, can we finish this in prayer? In the name of Jesus, and they'll be gone. Don't give them a drink of water. Don't say good day, good night. Don't say anything. God told you not to wish them good speed. You better watch when you say goodbye. Good. <laughs> you may be saying it to a deceiver. You say, well, I didn't know. There's no excuses. You see, what gets us in trouble is this big fat tongue. This, this, this is all, all done. And Matthew tells us, I, I, I can never remember the chapter and verse. I'm sorry. It says, every idle word we shall speak, we shall give an account thereof. You know how many people are just talking, I say good day, good night, too, and they may be deceivers? Let's move on. Do we tolerate them? Be kind and listen to what they have to say and give them hospitality and claps them in fellowship. Was that what we do? This is what the world would want you to believe. Be part of them. Let's ask John. Let's do it to according to the scripture, shall we? I mean, be good to them. Receive him not into your house. How hard is that? John doesn't even say talk to him. He said, get out of here. But that's rude and crude. Now, I challenge because, because I, I'm a, I'm a evangelist. I witness. I witness to anybody. But if, I, if Jesus told, never told me to go witness, I wouldn't. Doors knocking. Yeah, they'll, they'll leave. Most Jehovah Witnesses and Mormon that come to your door are well equipped. They got classes. I guarantee right now there's somewhere, and you can ask my wife, I guarantee there's, there's places in Daytona today. They probably have in a classroom somewhere how to deal with those that Baptist family with the white car. Mm -hmm. When you go on, I'm going to give you my address. How's that? When you go on 508 Fairmont Road, Bypass that house. I do. You go this house, walk past that house, even though he's sitting on his on his on his chair. That's my wife. I did that last time. Yep. I can't go anywhere with my foot. On the front porch, waiting for the new to Go to the next house. Go across the street to the to the old lady in that house. Go to the next door in that house. Go to the next house and then keep on walk get in your car and drive off down the end of the street. Why don't you go to 508 Fairmont? Because that guy knows Bible. And don't think scripture signs are going to stop them. My wife has a front lawn. I went to work one day and came home to billboards of Jesus Christ in my, in my front lawn. Praise the Lord. There's a sign my wife put right by the front door, the porch. It says, Jesus is God. And they still walk up. 
Now, if you're not asking to be attacked, <laughs> that's like saying, hey, piece of meat, I've got a dog. Come on in. If any fresh converts or learners, they will be with experienced persons of their association. They have classes about Jew Baptists. They have now classes in Norwich about John 10.30. Because they report back to their people, say, well, they gave me John 10.30. What am I supposed to do? I just got angry at them. Oh, my God. Look what John 10. Now, relax. Let's go to the Greek. And this is how you handle them. If they have been with, listen, my pastor and pastors I've been with and pastors that I've been with and cassette tapes tell me how to witness. I have been told how to study my Bible. If they tell me Bible-believing Christians how what I'm supposed to do with the Bible, don't you think those perverts are going to teach their people how to be perverted? Schools today. There has been a national degree. I'm going on the trail again. Here I go. Almost like Easter. They have declared in the United States that all bathrooms are now neutral. And the post signs neutral. Anybody can use it. If you don't know the difference between a weenie and a... I was not supposed to say that. You ought not be teaching. But they are now teaching that in the public schools that there's no difference. To back up that false doctrine. You better believe it. If they have been with the group several years, regretfully, you will not be able to influence them or counterattack. New and fresh ones, you may be able to do something. I have tried and to no time but misuse time. You can misuse time dealing with them. You can waste time dealing with them. I was ever... I was even told the other day, and I was writing, they do not send converts or learners out. I don't know about that. But some of the some of them I've dealt with, and I, I've got the very sheepish. But the person I was told was very honest, very, uh, very, uh, yeah, lots of words, very knowledgeable and very faithful. So I'm not going to disprove that. For a Jehovah Witness, again, I will offer them John 10.30. If they fight and retaliate, I speedily close the conversation. Proverbs 29.9, the scripture said, If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. And people who are watching you are saying, look at those two idiots battling it out. And that's my neighbor, and he's supposed to be a Christian. That guy's dressed up, so he's a Jehovah Witness. He ain't going to do no one. They will fight, and I will back off and shut the door. I have never met one that is ready to listen. But you may, and may God open the door for you, or for me. I would love to have someone involved in a cult who will be in my driveway. Get down and say, Lord, I am so sorry. I did not know. I want to believe in the true Jesus Christ. That guy is going to get up and, and realize I'm in glory. I have been absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's, that's how happy I would be. Having a convert out of, out of a cult would make me so, the greatest joy I would ever have in my entire life. Now get this. The greatest joy I would ever have in my life is to witness to a Jew and have him trust Jesus Christ. You mean gold, silver? No, 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 no. If I would have a child of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob say, I want to believe in Jesus Christ, my Savior, let's bow the knee. You don't even have to bow the knee. I can't. And ask Jesus Christ to save him. Who? I would take that crown off and say, Jesus, just, just the fact is, it was your, it was one of your people, John. I don't want a crown for that. Just the glory that one of Abraham's sons. Number two would be a cult that turns to Jesus Christ. That, that'd be my two glories. 
I've had people turn to Jesus. I had family members. I've, I had a wife that turned to Jesus Christ with my help. I had my children turn to Jesus Christ with my help. I got my grandmother out of a perverted Bible. I've had men in the prison get saved, God using me. But to call a Jew out into eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a fulfilling moment. To take a person out of the mouth of a lion, do you know who did that in the Bible? David took a sheep out of, the, uh, out of a lion and a bear. There's a place in the Bible that says that, you know, you take an ear or a leg out. Man, that would pee my spiritual britches. If struggle arises, excuse yourself, close the door, or leave. Let's see how far. I'm coming to the end, believe it or not. Two more pages, probably a hundred more lessons. John wrote, If they come to you having not this doctrine, receive them not. Receive him not. Receive them not. How inflexible is that? I'm just trying to see where, where would be a good spot to end this. Do not summon them into your house. Read the verse. I close the door behind myself and meet with them outside the house in the driveway. Since my van is there, I have scriptural hole over it. I use the car as my Bible. Scripture says, and what we and what do we want to do? What the Bible says, receive him not into your house. No open door policy. Bring your Bible. Know your Bible. Study your Bible. Show them your Bible. Open the Bible. Make them read the Bible. And I'll stop there. I can keep on going. 50 lessons. It's a warning. And when you try to witness to him, you're really going against what, what John's saying. I mean, he doesn't say not talk to him. The loophole is, okay, if I don't bring him to my house, I'll deal with him outside. Ugh. Don't we like to skate on thin ice? We take the sign, we just throw, okay, I don't see the sign. It's such a warning that these religions and cults are that John put it in writing. He warns this elect lady. Her children are saved. She's bringing her children up right. And he warns this woman. Thirteen verses from seven to eleven. It's all about deceivers. much prayer and if you really truly love souls and want to get saved try to witness to them but be prepared to back out prepare to lose the battle you may lose battles but the war is still on